Diabetes, a condition marked by elevated blood sugar levels, has been a focal point of health discussions for decades. It affects millions globally, leading to an incessant search for effective treatments and dietary strategies. One lesser-known element that has crept into these discussions is vanadium, a metallic element found in very small amounts in the human body which has sparked both curiosity and caution among the health community and those managing diabetes. Watch till the end to find out if vanadium is dangerous for diabetics. But before we continue, if you appreciate all the information and the research that goes into making a video like this, it does help out tremendously if you hit the like button and hit subscribe. Thank you, and let's begin. Vanadium is typically found in various foods and materials around us, from seafood and mushrooms to grains and black pepper. Beyond these sources, vanadium also exists in industrial environments, where it's used in steel alloys and as a catalyst in chemical reactions. Despite its pervasive presence, the average person rarely encounters vanadium in quantities that prompt health concerns. However, the interest in vanadium spiked when researchers started to study its potential insulin-like effects on blood glucose levels. The initial studies in the late 20th century were promising, hinting that vanadium could mimic the actions of insulin, thus helping to lower blood sugar levels. This was particularly significant because it suggested a potential new avenue for diabetes treatment, especially appealing for those struggling with insulin resistance, a hallmark of type 2 diabetes. For instance, one of the early studies indicated that when vanadyl sulfate, a form of vanadium, was given to diabetic rats, it markedly improved their glucose control. This led to a surge in enthusiasm about the potential applications of vanadium in diabetes management. The conversation around vanadium and its benefits continued to evolve as more studies were conducted. Researchers explored different compounds of vanadium, trying to find the most effective and safest form for potential therapeutic use. The most common forms studied have been vanadyl sulfate and sodium metavanidate, both of which have shown the ability to improve glucose control in diabetic animals. However, translating these findings from animal models to humans has been challenging. Human studies on vanadium have been less conclusive, presenting a more complex picture of its safety and efficacy. Some small-scale human studies have replicated the positive results seen in animal models, showing improvements in the sensitivity of cells to insulin and reductions in blood sugar levels among participants with diabetes. Nevertheless, these studies were typically small and short-term, making it difficult to draw definitive conclusions. Moreover, the question of safety has been equally important in the discussion about vanadium. In high doses, vanadium is undeniably toxic. It can cause a range of adverse effects, from gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea and stomach pain to more severe consequences, such as liver and kidney damage. The body's response to excessive vanadium exposure underscores the element's dual nature, potentially beneficial in small, controlled doses, but harmful when those limits are exceeded. Long-term safety is a critical aspect of any diabetes treatment, given that diabetes is a chronic condition requiring lifelong management. The concerns about vanadium's safety profile stem from the lack of comprehensive, long-term studies that would typically be required for a clearer understanding of its impact over time. For example, there are no large-scale, long-term studies investigating the effects of ongoing vanadium supplementation on organ function or its potential interactions with other medications typically used in diabetes management. This brings us to another crucial aspect of the vanadium conversation, regulatory oversight and supplementation guidelines. Currently, vanadium is not regulated by health authorities like the FDA as a treatment for diabetes. This means that products containing vanadium that are marketed for diabetes care are not subject to the rigorous testing and approval process that medications typically undergo. As a result, the purity, safety, and efficacy of over-the-counter vanadium supplements can vary widely, adding another layer of risk for consumers. So, where does this leave us in considering whether vanadium is dangerous for diabetics? The bottom line is that, while vanadium shows potential, there are significant safety concerns that cannot be overlooked. 
The evidence supporting its use in diabetes management is based primarily on animal studies and small, short-term human trials. More robust and extensive research is needed to determine not only the efficacy, but also the safety of vanadium for long-term use in humans. For diabetics considering vanadium as part of their management plan, it is crucial to consult with healthcare providers. They can provide guidance based on the latest research and personal health status. Until more definitive evidence is available, the use of vanadium should be approached with caution, considering both its potential benefits and risks. Understanding the potential of vanadium in diabetes treatment requires a nuanced look at the biological mechanisms through which it operates. Vanadium, particularly in the forms of vanadyl sulfate and sodium metavanidate, has been studied for its ability to mimic insulin, a hormone central to the regulation of glucose levels in the blood. This mimetic action is thought to occur through the enhancement of insulin receptor activity, which facilitates the uptake of glucose into cells, thereby lowering blood sugar levels. Such a mechanism presents a tantalizing prospect for addressing insulin resistance, a common challenge in type 2 diabetes. Additionally, research has delved into how vanadium affects the signaling pathways within cells that are involved in glucose metabolism. These studies suggest that vanadium can enhance glucose uptake independently of insulin, possibly by activating key enzymes involved in the glucose metabolism pathway. This action could theoretically provide a dual benefit in diabetes management, enhancing the effects of the body's own insulin and promoting glucose reduction in a way that does not solely rely on insulin. However, while the cellular level effects of vanadium sound promising, translating these effects into a reliable treatment option for diabetes involves overcoming significant hurdles. The primary concern is the dosage required to achieve these beneficial effects without inducing toxicity. The therapeutic window, the range of dosages at which a substance is effective without being toxic, is particularly narrow for vanadium. This makes it challenging to use safely, as the margin between a beneficial dose and a harmful one is quite small. Moreover, the individual variability in response to vanadium supplementation is another layer of complexity. Factors such as genetic makeup, existing health conditions, and concurrent medications can influence how a person reacts to vanadium. These variables make it difficult to predict who will benefit from vanadium supplementation and who might experience adverse effects. Considering these points, the scientific community remains cautious about endorsing vanadium as a safe and effective treatment for diabetes. Ongoing research is essential to better understand the full spectrum of vanadium's biological impacts and to develop protocols that maximize its benefits while minimizing risks. Until such advancements are made, the medical community recommends a conservative approach, prioritizing well-established diabetes treatments that have stood the test of rigorous long-term studies. This ensures that patients receive the most reliable and safe care possible while keeping an eye on emerging therapies that could potentially revolutionize diabetes management in the future. In summary, vanadium offers an intriguing possibility in the realm of diabetes treatment, with early studies suggesting it might help improve glucose control. However, its use is also shadowed by significant safety concerns and a lack of comprehensive human studies to fully understand its impacts. For now, the safest approach for diabetics is to rely on established treatments and to discuss any interest in vanadium with a healthcare professional, keeping informed about new research that may shed further light on this complex element's role in diabetes management.